can, I can do shading. Nice. Bright, not bright. <laughs> Hey everyone, this is Routinicast episode 402. Looks like the stream is now active. This is being recorded a little bit early on Monday, the 30th of November, 2020. This is going to be the raw version of the show that will also go out to YouTube, but then it will be edited and we will put it out as a podcast tomorrow. And Marcus is here. And Yo. say hi, guys, and we'll get going on the real podcast in a minute. I'm just going to do the a little tweet out and all that good stuff. Oh, good idea. I don't know why my uh, chat's Ooh. all mixed up. Mexed or messed? Messed. Ooh, I better turn on the can. Mexed up? Ooh, that, why is this not working? Look at the shading. Look at the shading. <laughs> you're um oh i know why it looks so stupid uh i'm watching a different i'm watching the wrong thing that'll do it <laughs> <laughs> bum, 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 bum. Boom. Boom. all right uh, let's see are we good to go then ready to go all right. I say we go I ahead and get going. I was born ready. Nice. It is 5.30, and I'll just go ahead and get a little water in me, and then we'll get going. Hi, and welcome to the Utini cast. I hope it's about him. This is episode 402 being recorded on Monday, November 30th, 2020. I'm your host, Chill, and with me is my co-host, Kitty Kisses. Hey, Kitty. Hey, Chill. Hey, and we do have a guest today. We've got Marcus back. And how you doing, Marcus? Hi, everybody. And how I'm go- ready to. I'm ready to go training on Tython. Excellent, right excellent. And how's the working class nerds going? Fantastic. So um, I got a crazy email, and... It was from an analytical company in um, the podcast world, and it said that it, they wanted to congratulate us because in the last 30 days, we were rated number 36 in the UK in the category of video games, number 50 in the Netherlands for the category of video games, and number 58 in France in the category of video games, <laughs> which nice. is like... How many, like how many thousands of podcasts are there? And like, we're, it's crazy, but you know what? Awesome. That is excellent. So here's the key. Americans don't like us. <laughs> <laughs> so shout out to all of our friends in yeah, Europe. Like, um, in you Europe. guys are awesome. <laughs> excellent. <laughs> and what you been up to in game? So I kind of got kicked in the bum uh, a couple weeks ago. Hmm. maybe three weeks ago now um so my saturday night nightmare team uh went away because the raid leader had to start working on saturdays at the time that we were mm. doing uh doing the raid so obviously you know everybody raids so much or has their life so we had to the team just gone <clears throat> ah, and shame. for some um for some other reasons for me, um, my my own team that I ran for three years, Death Star Troopers, I called it quits. Um, you you ever get to a point with a team, and it's not a downer, where it's just like, you're like, I'm tired. You find, um, you know, you find, you've done so much for three years and like finding subs and, you know, dealing with seven different people's personality plus your own it's mm -hmm. it just three years is a long time and right. so i hung it up um i'm on a new team on tuesday nights which is great we're doing nightmare dread fortress super fun tanking is awesome but then at the same time now i have a hole in my schedule and okay. so i have been leveling ah. um a smuggler and I'm almost done with chapter one. And just for the record, I cannot wait to kill Slavic. If that's a dark side choice. I don't care. He's dying. Like that dude has just been bad news. <laughs> kill that bastard. So that's right. this, so there, and I don't usually play on the pub side. And I've said this before, 
I don't have my legendary status. I know. Wah, 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 wah. But <laughs> so I'm on this I'm on this mission to do it. So I finished the agent story uh, a while ago. And then I was in actually Kitty's stream and, and we were talking about it. And I said, Kitty, tell me what I should do for a class. And he's like, do the smuggler. So the tune's name is Bromance Kitty. Um, <laughs> I've, tr I've tried to make him look as much like Kitty as I can. Mm. And anytime I can, you know, nice. I feel like if if I was Kitty in real life, every female that you can talk to, you would flirt with. Yeah. That's just <laughs> so, uh, that's just yeah. how it is. Right. And um, so I'm almost done with chapter one. What I really like about the smuggler story is you can be that snarky kind mm. of you're not you're borderline rude, but you're like. Suave. Mm -hmm. I don't know how else to say it. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. But what I'm having a lot of trouble with is heat management of the guns. Mm. So when I'm fighting a gold, like I can't do any moves except my basic move because there's no heat reduction. Right. Not not yet anyway. Yeah. Right. So I'm. I, it's like. I don't know if maybe I'm doing something wrong or if I'm just hitting buttons as they go because I don't even like I haven't even looked up the um, rotation for it. Right. So I feel like because I'm a rotter, you just smash everything. You can hit one and two yeah. and decimate everything in sight. Where here, even like the, with the agent story, I was always running out of um, the heat. So that's where I'm struggling the most. Right. What spec are you going? Uh oh, I have two blasters. Okay, so you're a snipe, or you're a gunslinger. Gunslinger, yeah. The kind that uses yeah, that's the a, cover. Yes, yes, because that's what I did in the agent story, and Kitty actually in his stream said I should do it because I'm familiar. It'll feel a lot like the agent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And do you guys play um, agents and smugglers a lot? A fair bit. I okay. used to be my main used to be a sniper. But I think I know what you're going to say. <laughs> it's really hard for me um, because I'm so used to being a melee character and being mobile. Mm -hmm. Like I was fighting one of like the it was like a pack of golds and I was in my crouch to shoot. And it was, you know, um, uh, doing its cast and these red circles. They actually killed me because Bodar was being lazy and he didn't want to heal me. <laughs> So I would say that's Come on, the hardest. Yeah, exactly. Um, that was probably the hardest. That's the hardest part for me with the class mm -hmm. is the mobility and then the heat management. So any tips? Yes. Um, you know, you have one attack that's kind of uh, just your your no heat uh, attack, your main like free attack. Yeah, the no one, the first Spit move you get. Yeah, spit that thing out, and while you're doing that, move. And never just stay in one spot. Do an attack, move to a new place, because um, there's certain abilities that'll proc more if you're, you know, you go into that crouch position. And then while you're doing that main attack, that freebie, your cooldown will happen. Your, uh, your heat will diminish during that time. So just like if you ever look at it and you're like, oh, shit, I'm getting a little hot and you don't have your cooldown yet, yep. just hit that that main main one and run around to somewhere else. Yeah, definitely never stay in one spot for very long. Huh. Uh, I'll, I'll try that. Yeah, it'll depend a little on which spec you're doing, too. If, if it's the first one, that really is more of a turret direct damage one. The middle one and the uh, and the dot one are a little bit more mobile, even in the the sniper and and gunslinger configurations. So, uh, so okay. you, yeah. So it depends on which which spec you're using as well, for sure. Curse words help too, like really loud. <laughs> I, I it does frustrate me sometimes. But the other thing, and I know I've been chatting for a while, because you guys both know the class story so well, you'll understand this. It actually feels good to die in the game. Yeah. In the story, because like Bodar being lazy and not healing me, <laughs> but me standing in stupid because 
you know, I wanted to get my charging blast off. Pew, pew. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And But it kills me because Bodar's being lazy, but it actually makes you think, oh, what was that guy? You went, you had to get a part. You got like a, uh, a, a crate dragon um, tooth. And that was the only way you could talk to Diego. Oh, that was right, the thing. Do you Diego. Remember? Yes, that's on yeah, Tatooine. Yes. Well, so you right, exactly. So I died. I died. And it was um it was kind of awesome because between the Sith warrior and then uh Diego healing, I I I died. And so- it, it, I, I, I don't mind dying because it makes you remember that you got to be um careful <laughs> yes yeah that's the right way to put it um i usually don't have my companion on heels because then i have to learn my defensive cooldowns and stuff like that but uh that's one way to make it fun and every once in a while you die yeah so and i i like it too it's a challenge it makes it a little bit more of a challenge i noticed that uh um I've been uh, leveling with Chill, and he has an interesting way of going about doing it. He uh, he doesn't level up. Like for instance, when if I'm playing by myself, I want to get the highest level I can as fast as I can, hmm. just because I like to have all the abilities. But I see. as you're leveling up, you know your lower level things can be a little harder. You know. And then, of course, not having your companion on heels makes it a little bit more challenging. But, and that's what that is. <laughs> Interesting. But yeah, but that's what I've been up to. It seems like a lot. Yeah. That's excellent. You're always super busy. <laughs> oh, moving sucked, as you can see, my new humble abode. And looks great. I, yeah, it looks anybody fun. wants to come to a- the Arendale Castle, it's right over here, and you guys can come <laughs> hang out. We can play Elsa and Anna. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, and Kitty, what have you been up to? Um, like I said, I have been playing with you. Yeah. All week. <laughs> we uh, been... chill, and myself, uh, we made cosplay characters. He is Lana. Mm-hmm. I am Mar. And we've just been going through the story. Haven't it's really, really fun not only to play with someone else when you, you know, usually into soloing it, but just to see how other people go about doing the same stuff. Like every once in a while, Chill will be like, hey, you got to check this out. You know, this is how I do it. And I'll be like, oh, that's a super cool shortcut. And then every once in a while, I'll be like, hey, Chill, check this out. And he's like, I never knew you could do that. So it's really yeah. fun in that respect. Well, watching your stream, I think it was yesterday, I was laughing because you guys were being so goofy, funny. Yeah. And playing the characters as you guys are. I remember, oh, I've been waiting for this. It's Mar talking to Mar. Yeah, Mar <laughs> on Mar. Uh, yeah. I was laughing so far. Yeah, yeah we're going to we're gonna actually have a Lana on Lana action. Pretty soon. Some chapters, and I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, we're, we're nearly yeah. done with McKeb, yeah. and that means Prelude to Shadow of Revan is here. Yeah. So that'll be excellent. That's yeah. Everybody's waiting for that. That's the most asked question in chat. Wait a minute. Are you going to romance Lana? And we're like, yes. <laughs> Rana, Lana on La- Lana action will Definitely. be. Definitely. <laughs> yes, that has to happen. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> my the question for the both of you now. What is the biggest challenge to co-streaming a story together? And what is the benefit of streaming or or what's the, what's your favorite part of streaming together? And then what's the most challenging part of streaming together? Uh, My favorite part is just the fact that it livens up the stories because, you know, we've, we've, I've done them a lot and I know Kitty has as well. So seeing it this way is, is actually really fun. Uh, Sometimes you see the conversations one after the other. We're sometimes space barring, and you know, like sometimes we're doing stuff separately, like on the ships, because it's too difficult to do, you know, together. Uh, but it's really fun to to kind of see what what Kitty cho- chooses to do, and also how he chooses to level. Uh, we, we're both a little different in that respect. He he does, in fact, like to do a, a lot of the side stuff so that he levels up right away. 
Um, I, I sort of keep things lean and mean, and I tend to be stay a little bit closer to the level of the planet because of that. Uh, so yeah, so that's that. But it's just been it's just been a lot of fun just uh, talking with him and and doing it that way. It's just it's just been and just laughing a lot is great too. It's it's so yeah. much fun that way. Uh, yeah, the difficult parts are like figuring out the the best ways to do it, like. In my head, I thought, okay, well, we'll dual stream and, and, you know, each stream separately and whatever. And then it's like, even the first time, like before I even started the first one, it's like, you know what? Let's just have you stream. Because <laughs> if we try to both stream, then like people won't know like which chat, you know, is, is more, is, you know, they should be on and stuff like that. It's like, let's just do one, uh, keep it like that. So that simplified some things. And then it's just figuring all the little weird details because there are a lot of strange bugs i guess you call them or not bugs but it's just variations on how things work in the game when you're dueling yeah like, like really odd and un yeah like some conversations you can't even do together right. some of them you know it's like you can't you or some usually you can go into each other's instances but then once in a while there'll just be one that you can't <laughs> and it's it's not clear exactly why it is it, it just happens it's just really odd there's stuff. probably something some reason for it behind the scenes and sometimes you can kind of suss it out it's like okay well uh, you know this is this is taking place right outside your ship's uh, you know your ship's door and it's because of that it's kind of messing things up but anyway it's yeah it, that's sort of the difficult thing is trying to trying to get as much character time together as possible because that the game does kind of try almost try to separate you a little bit even though yeah. even though we're not trying right. to do it that way we're trying to do it together and it, it's difficult it's difficult because of that we've uh, most recently started kind of going trying new things like okay does this work you know can we turn these missions in at one spot mm -hmm. and having two people working in tandem to answer those questions is really cool because I'll, a chill will spawn at one spot and I'll spawn in another spot to see, you know, how the game reacts to it or how we can uh, basically find easier ways to do stuff. Yeah. But it's, it's very interesting. It's very cool and very funny. Right. We both showed each other, each other's like shortcuts and stuff like that. Like, Oh, you can jump out the side of this instance and, and that takes you right around the side where you, where you need to go next. And, you know, Oh yeah, no, I'm, and then I've been jumping out the you know the regular door and everything, and it's like sure. oh, a lot faster this way. I love it, and I never didn't know this one. And then I showed him a, you know, a different one, and and you know and like that. So that's that's a lot of fun too. It's just sort of learning how how we play. Getting to know you, getting <laughs> to know all about you. Uh, the other thing I've been doing is unlocking all my goodies. Yeah. Unlocking yeah. stuff. Unlock for, uh, the unlock sale is on, people. It's, oh on. it's in the show I notes later like, on. I'm going ape shit. Yeah, so I, many cartel coins oh just went right down the shit for shitter for me. <laughs> All right, so can we just talk about the biggest fuck up of my life? Ooh, sorry, sure, sorry. that's fine. I just said shitter. All so. right. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. So I have never done. Oh, that. Where's the pinky? Put the pinky up, buddy. Come on. Um. Oh, sorry. <laughs> So <laughs> the um thank you. So the uh the shroud of memory we talked about this I think the last time I was on. Yeah. I missed out on that. Right. For uh it. So I was on right. my smuggler and I saw it was on sale. Yes. And it's still expensive, but it's on it was on sale. So I bought it. It was 1900 nice. coins. Nice. Okay, but here's the problem. It's locked to the character you unlock it on. No, it's not. Mm, it shouldn't be. I can't put it in my legacy thing because it says it's bound. Uh, did you consume it? Yeah, I think if you consume it, it will just be for the entire... It should be for the entire account. Yeah, well, I've I had the same thing. And it was really weird because if you've already not gotten HK on a character, you have to go to the uh, what is it, the Odessan uh, stronghold and do that mission real quick and then it'll unlock. There just sometimes there will be a couple of hoops you have to jump through, but it does indeed uh, do it all for your entire uh, account. Really? Yes. So... 
what I don't know. So if I log into a different tune, that will be there. Mm -hmm. It's just sometimes you might have to, you know, uh, do that HK mission. The one where you get HK back originally from the chapters. Excuse me, where you go into Dr. Orgrob's yep. bot and, and do the like, oh, don't shoot these guys. Okay, shoot these guys. Do that mission and it'll unlock. Okay, I will. Um, I'll do that later. Unless I, 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 yeah, it's a lot of fun. Definitely, like let let your let your stream audience know that you're gonna do it because it it's, it's kind it's still kind of rare and it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. It's great yeah. because the chapters are so serious, and Star Wars isn't always serious. You know, there's always good, funny little breaks of humor, and that's what that chapter is. It's like a a, a fun little break in between all the seriousness but you're gonna love it it's really and you get a great new uh companion right okay I, i'm so excited to do it I'll, I'll do it saturday night so i have been unlocking lots of stuff this time of year i i give myself a little uh a little extra money to buy my coin so i can do my life day unlock stuff and i've unlocked gobs of stuff and i'm very happy about it <laughs> nice <laughs> on to you chill all right well let's see who's in chat to the, uh, today 152 domino a gains p avenged maximus cheryl mercury is here hey cheryl our cheryl. guild leader Decion's here uh fort sir gator skull 1289 lewis hughes jr uh, Old Taz, Falzion, Rube19, Rotator Cuffs, Rothenby, Cero Banana, Sledgester, Sinwolf69, and TBS42. Hey, everyone. Thanks for coming in. And yeah, so, I mean, there's not too much more to say because I really have been doing a lot of the uh, level, co-leveling the dual thing with Kitty. Uh, it's been a ton of fun. Uh, we've Yeah, we'll soon see uh, Lana. I, I put a picture of, of Lana in the... In the thing, if you've seen Kitty's Twitter feed, you've seen the little gif, little gif uh, he's made of Lana oh, and right. Mar doing the crazy dance. So that's a lot of fun. So check that out. Like go go to Kitty's uh, Twitter handle, uh, Kitty Kisses, and then look for his recent uh, tweets, and it'll be there. And it's really funny. So that was a lot of fun. I'm just yeah, I'm having a ball doing that. Uh, we're what level are we now? We're close to sixty, something like that. 55 maybe i thought we were a little higher than that i think i think we we're a little higher than that but yeah anyway high high 50s almost 60 something like that and we're on mccab so it's 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 been going pretty quick uh despite the fact that you know we have to do run through a few extra hoops and stuff like that because of where we're dual uh, seeing some of the cutscenes twice and stuff like that usually we will sort of space bar the second one unless there's a reason not to like there's there's an important or unusual choice or if we know that there's a choice that feels very different, if you do it one way or the other, we'll sort of like not spacebar it. But usually we do spacebar the second one. Uh, there's not necessarily a whole lot of uh, reason not to. Um, they are both uh, they're both juggernauts, and he and uh, Kitty's on the smashy smashy spec, and I'm on the I guess it's technically a dot spec, although it really feels more like just a single target damage spec. Uh, but I think it's called Vengeance. And uh, yes. yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty, it's pretty sweet though. I'm actually used to sort of my main is actually a tank. So it still feels reasonably close to that. You know, there's some, some of the same, some of the abilities are sort of similar and, and stuff like that. But uh, I, it's actually kind of fun because I don't think I've ever really done this spec before. And it does feel very Lana-esque. There's a lot of like big, uh, big moves and, and nice, uh, uh, nice animations and stuff like that. So I'm really enjoying that part of it too. All right, let's get on to the tip of the week. Uh, we have a couple of tips just that we did ourselves. Marcus, do you want to do yours? Sure. So um, I host an event once a month mm -hmm. uh, with my guild over on the Starforge server. And um, it, I, if you're new to the game or don't do PvP and you like achievements, there's a place on Tatooine called uh, the Outlaw's Den, mm -hmm. I think it is. Yep. And so the key is, is grab, you know, grab six of five or six of your friends, one person, you go into the outlaws den and one group of people, you can leave one or two people as imps 
because it's the best side and then the other side can go pub and you whoever's on the pub or whoever's turn it is you go into that area you take off your gear and you just kill them so there's achievements for 10 kills 50 kills and 100 kills oh wow right, right. and what's nice is one end of the map is like the pub side and one end is the imp side so if you're doing like the imp side killing all the pub tunes will go over to the imp side and you get unlock that quick travel mm. to the outlaws den and i think it's like it's cheap I it's think cheap it's like, like twenty thousand credits or something like mm -hmm. that it's something like that so you do that and then you can just keep quick traveling back and you'll get right. three achievements in 10 minutes because nice. you're going to be killing all those people all over and over and over and it's going to be so easy and repetitive but it's a nice way to spend you know an hour with your friends and everybody gets, you know, three achievements if you don't have it already. That's a great idea using the quick travel. Mm -hmm. Well done, sir. <laughs> oh, um, old has said it's 50 K. He just looked, but okay. still, still for 50, 50,000, you know, and it's, it's a, just a fun time to get together with your friends and, you know, kill each other. I mean, I think we did it and we had seven people or eight people and we got a hundred kills in a half an hour. Oh, wow. Yeah. So it goes really cool. quick cause you just keep cycling back into it and they don't have armor on. So essentially you hit them once with a lightsaber and they're donezo. Right. And because they, because they have their armor off, they're not getting uh, dinged with, you know, re repair penalties or anything like that. Correct. So Ooh. it goes really, yeah. So it goes really fast. Um, Dekion, please steal that. Um, I'm in there, deck. Yeah, yeah, are there in fact other planets? I thought there were other planets where you can also get sort of similar PvP uh, achievements. Is that correct? I think Oricon has some, but I'm not sure what yeah. the number is. And I thought there might be one for Ilum, sort of in, you know, sort of to, there is. to tie in with the uh, event, the Gree event I that think happens. There in. is, yes. Yes, okay. I just know because the Outlaws Den has the quick travel. Yeah. And it makes it so easy because, you know, you if just... somebody's a new player and they want to get those achievements with me, I'll give you the 50,000 credits. Right. So you can unlock that quick travel because it's and it's a fun time. Oh, yeah. Rishi has one too, I guess. Exactly. Oh, and yeah, it's does. true. Like in 50,000, it, it, it may be a lot if you're like a free to play player or relatively new or whatever. But if there's any old hands around, you know. Yeah, they're, they they won't have a trouble probably getting you 50,000 credits. So. Right. <laughs> yeah. But it's, nice. it, it's a fun time. And, you know, again, um, if you're on the Starforge server, come get at me. Right. Houtini event. Yeah. For sure. I just think uh, Kitty just signed up to host that. I did. Ah, <laughs> oh, damn it. I said I did before I listened to what you said. Yo, ma <laughs> yo Master <laughs> Will. Yo. <laughs> All right. I, my tip, uh, I've already sort of talked about a little bit of this in, in our week, but uh, if you want to level with a friend, the one, the one thing you always have to do, and we already knew about this, uh, we mentioned it last time, is put the setting on for, quote, allow access to same class slash personal phases. And wow. obviously you have to have that because otherwise it won't give you the option to to run into their instance you'll just do yours um so obviously you turn that on but beyond that there's just a, just know that when you're doing it there's going to be a lot of strange variation going on sometimes you won't be able to join conversations that are out in the field sometimes you will more rarely you won't even be able to join each other's instances although usually you can uh, sometimes items and clickables for a mission help both of you other times you each have to do them and they stay separate uh, so, you know, you just kind of have to kind of roll with that. You just figure out what what each individual mission is doing and just kind of go with it. Also, it's pretty hard to go on each other's ship. You can do it, but it's it's a real pain in the rump. So uh, if you're really determined to see every possible conversation of each other's, you, you could try that. But it's definitely going to take extra time. So, like, kind of figure out what part of what part of those things you're willing to sort of just see your own version of so like kitty and i we're just seeing each other you know our, our own ship uh conversations with you know, uh, both the holocom at the beginning and end of planets but also the uh, the conversations with the companions so uh, and and that's fine and then a lot of the other stuff that's out in the field we do get to see the two different variations and and that's that can be a lot of fun especially when uh, kitty decides to choose something a little unusual and it's like 
<laughs> okay, Mars going dark side again. <laughs> Full or, dark. No, Jill rides his uh, pod racer into my ship. Yes, <laughs> that's right. That well, there's one weird time when the end of a planet had us, you know, b- going back to the hangar in the star uh, in the starport, and then at the end of it, we ran into the ships, and because it was his instance outside of the ship it put me in his ship and the weird thing about that was it didn't notice right away that i shouldn't be mounted so there was a few seconds where it was letting me just kind of run around <laughs> on my mount and then it kind of said nope you can't really mount in here and then it finally dismounted me it was very bizarre it was something i did not expect to so ever yeah see. yeah yeah so the, the game the game works very weirdly <laughs> in terms of like leveling together but it, it's actually been a lot of fun to roll with and yeah so just be aware that there there's going to be a lot of weird variations. Uh, there have been a couple of odd bugs where, like, the one who the one who first joined the other person's one, it, it causes a bug where then neither one can advance. You have to go out and reset stuff like that. But as long as you're willing to roll with it, it's totally cool. So anyway, if you have a tip of the week, I didn't, go ahead. I did not know about that because I tried to do it. Uh, a dual same thing mm-hmm. and it didn't work and we both didn't know how why it was doing it so we ended up yeah. not doing it so i'm going to unlock that um allow access to same class slash personal phases right it's under and, the social yeah it's yeah under so the social i'm gonna options. do that as soon as the show's over because Excellent. i would love to be able to do that with somebody because watching you two do it yeah. It's awesome. It's been a lot of fun. <laughs> it's I, super fun. And I, I do a lot of cosplay characters, but they're usually not Star Wars ones. I try to find it. They tend, they tend to be like superhero, you know, Marvel and DC. And it's it's a lot of fun to sort of see how close I can get inside the SWOTOR universe. With Lana, like, there's literally Lana Benico's outfit, and there's Lana Benico's hair. <laughs> and yellow eyes is an option and stuff like that. So it's been, I was able to get, pretty reasonably you know, close uh the face face is as close as i can get it i'm pretty happy with it and she looks awesome yeah and i've never she and, does but, look awesome it's she been a lot of so fun good. so <laughs> thank you <laughs> all right well if you have a tip of the week go ahead and send it in to tinycast at gmail.com before the next show and you'll get a chance to win a tonfon or m83r droid or an m2b9 droid code courtesy of bioware and a new teeny cast provided cartel market pack from a latest shipment which basically means an ultimate pack nowadays and that will bring us to the mind trap and let's see so this week uh i kind of came up with this one on pretty much on my own i think from what i remember i don't remember you mentioning this one before kitty but uh i just uh, decided how do we how do people handle their flirt options in swotor we had been doing a lot of flirting of course uh, I think this is right around this time we started uh, the whole Lana and um, and Mar thing. So how do you usually handle flirt options in SWOTOR? And there were four options. Uh, I, f- I flirt everyone possible. I flirt until the romance arc. I only do one romance. Or I rarely or never flirt. We had a pretty good amount of answers this time. 528 votes. And it was uh, interestingly sort of spread out. There was it was almost a tie between the first and second place, which were I only do one romance with thirty nine percent, and I flirt with everyone possible was close on its heels with thirty four point eight percent. I flirt until the romance arc, which is actually what I chose. It's kind of my typical answer. Obviously, there's a lot of variation in the sort of character I'm doing and whatever, but very typically like i'll keep doing flirt options until i do the actual romance arc with whatever character they're going to do it with and then i sort of like more mostly leave flirting behind at that point i i guess i'm just naturally sort of uh you know mono <laughs> monogamous that way uh, and i rarely or never flirt uh, 6.4 percent so way way behind that is i rarely or never flirt but it makes sense that some people would you know if you happen to be like person who only has like maybe you're just a jedi like like you only play jedis and you only play them you know the way that jedis typically are which is you know very non-romantic uh 
that I could see, I could totally see that. Or if you're just not interested in flirting in general, maybe that's maybe that's not your speed. Uh, <laughs> there you go. So that that is six point six point four percent. How about you guys? Uh, I already said I, d- I did the flirt until romance arc, but how about you, uh, Marcus? How about what, what, what would your so, choice have been? Okay, so I I only flirted with one person for each story, so I always determined. Okay. Okay, like Kira Kira was my main, mm-hmm. right? And then it became Lana for everybody because I'm absolutely in love with Lana. <laughs> she is pretty awesome, yeah. But the caveat here is now that my smuggler bromance kitty is alive, <laughs> I flirt with every single person possible. If there's a flirt option, you're getting flirted. And if it goes a little dark and dirty, it's happening still. And I almost feel like I almost blush sometimes at the things that comes out of his mouth. But I'm just <laughs> and I'm just saying to myself, well, if I was Kitty, this would be coming out of my mouth. So that is hilarious. <laughs> so yeah, so I'm kind of like so Kitty's being a little quiet here. <laughs> right. So I I I voted. I only do one romance. That's because they're right. Just that's that, what you uh, usually do. Yeah. Right. That's my caveat. Right. Because of bromance, Kitty. He's well. You're gonna have you're gonna have a lot of fun because you know the smuggler. Not only can you flirt, but you have two different romance options, and you have to decide how you're gonna handle them. Because there gets to be this weird in between point where you're you can technically flirt with both, and then they'll sort of push you towards one or the other. I uh, I it, know who I'm. I know who I'm gonna be with if it's a possibility, but I don't know because I've never done it. Risha's oh, my are. squeeze. I like Risha too. Yeah, <laughs> Risha's pretty awesome. Risha's yeah, pretty Risha's awesome. Song. There's a, a skin you can get for Risha that makes her look like Khaleesi. Oh, really? Like a like yeah. long blonde locks and whatever. Mm-hmm. It's got that braid too down the back. Oh, cool. See, I don't know how to do that. I, I'm I'm so lost in this. I'm the worst Nightmare Space Barbie player ever. I'm the one that's getting kicked <laughs> out of the nice Nightmare Space Barbie team yeah. because I try so hard <laughs> and, and like still... I do okay. <laughs> I, like I do good with the mounts because that's easy. You go to the planet and you buy one of the mounts that's available. Okay. But the outfits I, I'm terrible at, and then having to. <laughs> change the appearance of the default companion i'm bad <laughs> just go just, to right, yeah. um just i'll help you all right we're gonna get you set up <laughs> we gotta get you out of the uh, class story armor <laughs> yeah uh, 152 domino says i need to ki- i need kitty training for bromance kitty that's right <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, I, I I really do like Risha as well. Um, a copy Spire, I've always said like it took me a couple of characters before I ended up doing the romance on her. The nice thing about that one is when I finally did the romance with a copy Spar, I got to appreciate that character a lot more because if she feels very, she's like very, she keeps you at very much arm's length. And when you do the romance arc, you get to see a side of her that you don't really in the other one, and it it, it brought out a lot of interesting. Um, aspects of her character that I didn't get to see any other way. So I do like the romance uh, arc for Akavi, but I definitely am more of a Risha fan myself as well. Hmm. Yeah. A lot of, a lot of people like answered back, you know, in addition to the, to the many votes, you know, a lot of people were saying, you know, depends on the character. Some people like with age smuggler agent or Sith, I flirt with everyone with others. I only do one romance. That's kind of along the lines that I would say I would do too. A lot of my, a lot of my agent and smuggler characters tend to be um, open to flirting to more char- to more, with more people, um, and sometimes with Sith, and then others it tends to be a little bit more reserved. But yeah. Uh, and then one of the responses, one, if the choice is uh, Dark Jason, there's no flirting. <laughs> 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 she does go for it. You got to give her that when, when she gets that dark side, uh, taste of dark side. Yes, she, she, she just, goes all the way dark. Yeah, like. she goes full dark for sure. <laughs> yeah. uh, <laughs> and then uh, depends on the character. If there's a, this is from uh, David Messer. If there's a specific romance I'm per- pursuing, I flirt with that character. And if I'm not, then I flirt with everything. <laughs> However. My bounty hunter doesn't flirt with anyone because I have a sprawling fictional series for her and Galt. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. 
I could see, you know what? I know Galt is not uh, an allowed, you know, part of the story uh, uh, romance arc characters, but I could see, I could see that being a thing. He's, uh, we know, you know, we, we know he's, uh, he's a Hilo fan, of course, but uh, yeah, I could see someone uh, digging, digging Galt, especially with his, you know, his, his personality, especially. For sure. Yeah. Hilo's got a sexy voice too. Bring her along. She does. She really does. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> um, yeah. That. So that was a lot of fun. It was. It was fun hearing That's back cool. from people. Yeah. And they're, like I say, they ran the gamut from eh, not too often. Usually, <laughs> like some people are like flirting. Yeah. Other people are like, <laughs> as a Sith Lord or smuggler, I flirt with everyone. Of course, that's a must do. So yeah, <laughs> it it really does run the gamut, and that's why it's in the game. So nice. th- thank the devs for uh, for including that those options because to me that really is some of the more fun stuff, and it's always it's always interesting like when you have, um, just one of those random flirts. I love how like the male trooper has a random flirt uh, that that actually has a bit of an arc to it. It's the one. It's the gal. I can't remember her name off the top of my head, but she starts. She's on Coruscant. Uh, there's, there's one for, there's several for like agents. Usually I think of both sides, male and female, uh, the, the smuggler definitely has some just sort of random out in the field sm- flirts as well. And those are always interesting to see them pop up either brief ones where they, it's just like one flirt option and that's it. And other ones where like something actually happens, which is well, cool. Um, bro- bromance kitty got giggity with, uh, <laughs> There, there was like a noble on Alderaan. Alderaan, that's right. Yeah, the yeah, Alderaan see, one. He, she's she's he very came attractive. Out hard. Yes. He met her and he was like, "Oh my God, hey buddy, your sister's gorgeous." And his face was like, "Say what?" <laughs> <laughs> and, and it just happened. So yeah, I actually like that character a lot. She's she's awesome. That's funny. Yeah. <laughs> All right, that'll bring us to the Hollow Feed, and let's see. So, right after the last episode, the dev streams for Six Point Two Echoes of Vengeance happened. Uh, Musco, Charles Boyd, Keith Kanig was there. Uh, there was a couple of other people who sort of popped in. Um, let's see, and then there was also talks with several of the. They were all pre-recorded um, with several uh, voice actors, which was really really cool. So there was uh, 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 Carrie Walgren, the female Jedi Knight voice actor, was on, uh, which was really cool. Something that I don't know why it didn't click with me, but she's also the voice of Jessica on Rick and Morty, which is a show I happen to like. And I did not know that the female Jedi Knight was Jessica, of all things. Which Is, is sort Jessica of, the sister? She's the, she's the one that Morty's in love with at school. She's... Oh. She's like the redhead that, that the popular redhead that like everyone loves, but you know Morty's like head over heels for her, right. and okay. yeah. And I did not realize that that was uh, Carrie Walgren, and that was the female Jedi Knight voice. And I I I, I want to go back and like like listen to both like side by side and see what she's doing differently with her voices and <laughs> stuff, you know. So that was really cool, and she, and. They all talked a little bit about like how um, how this year and COVID, you know, has meant uh, to their to to their industry and and their personal lives and so on. You know, over the internet recording projects and all that sort of thing. Um, she's she talked a little bit also about how her uh, her voice work as the Jedi Knight character has developed over time, and also how her her voice work for the character has altered due to the changes in the larger Star Wars universe because since 2011 you know we have the whole we have like the Disney takeover we have all the Disney movies and the Disney shows and that's also sort of like altered how she handles the character which is kind of a cool thing Uh, Hmm. so yeah Uh, they went over a little bit then about like what is what had happened in 2020 so far like you know uh, the Alderaan Stronghold and Swoop Races came out all that sort of stuff the Steam Feast of Prosperity, Mandalorian items, conquest improvements, all that sort of thing. Then they got into the 6.2, which is kind of like the meat of it. The new Flashpoint, Spirit of Vengeance, and uh, Echoes of Oblivion is come a little story thing for Echoes of Oblivion. There's going to be a login reward system, uh, an emote window, return of the life day, and the nine-year anniversary. And of course, everyone's excited for the ten-year anniversary next year, but we do have the nine-year anniversary this year. 
we've had the test server and in fact it just got announced that the test server is now done it happened like shortly shortly before the show just a couple hours before the show they announced that the the test server is now down for 6.2 we know that 6.2 is coming out in december uh as far as i i did not see and i did see the notice about the test server being taken down i did not see an, a notice of exactly when 6.2 would be uh launching we know it's supposed to be in december though so what part of what part of 6.2 is really are you looking forward to let's say kitty this time what are you looking forward to in 6.2 I am really looking forward to the emote. Uh, the emote yeah. window. Okay. I love, I use the emotes all the time. And you've got them Help all people. unlocked, which is pretty awesome. I've got them a hundred percent unlocked. But, wow. Uh, That's a lot. I, I love, I love the emotes and the dances <laughs> and all that crap. And the but, chairs uh, and all that. Yeah, yeah. I'm really looking forward to that. And I'm really looking forward to the spirit of vengeance, the flashpoint, mm -hmm. because I did it on, um, uh, test server a little bit, but then I was like, no, 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 I want to wait. <laughs> nice. But yeah, I'm just looking for the whole thing, but th that, uh, quality of life for the, uh, emotes, that little, uh, tab that they have on there is really in intuitive. And I hope they give us like a, you know, they can mod that mod the, the new window into like it would be cool to be able to chain them together or mm. put them in your your toolbar so right maybe but like yeah like drag it drag it down so that anytime you want to do the shuffle the smuggler shuffle or whatever <laughs> <laughs> the mar and lana smuggler shuffle. yeah that was pretty that was a lot of fun <laughs> yeah i'm just looking forward to new i think that's that's about it yeah just yeah just anything new and Marcus, how about you? So I am looking forward to two things. I'm really looking forward to the new story because essentially we've been starving for story for 14 months. Mm -hmm. And this is probably my biggest complaint is I really hope this story is like story worthy. Um, everybody always hangs me out to dry because my favorite expansion is Knights of the Fallen Empire. Um, because it was a story, it, this game is meant to be story driven. Yeah, all the extra stuff is fine, but we got new content every three months, two months, three months. Mm -hmm. And it was awesome because you always had something to look forward to. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of people are saying that they don't like that way that they do the game, but I would, I would actually beg to differ with everybody and say instead of getting content once every 14 months, let's get it every three months and then they can just do small pieces and then it pieces to the big story um but i'm really looking forward to the new story because i want i feel like something big is coming mm -hmm. and we can talk tinfoil hats later the the reason why i'm saying that is because this is the beginning of the end of the emperor story so whatever their plan is there's going to be a new bad um, what do you call it? Apex villain? No, new big bad, uh, big bad. Usually. Yeah. yeah. Um, so there's going to be a new big bad that we're going to start with, I'm guessing with the 10 year. Um, and then the other thing that I'm really looking forward to, believe it or not, is all of the steam stuff. So I've always used steam. Um, I always found that the launcher was terrible for SOTOR, okay. I've always in and everybody says, Oh, you got to take off bit Raider. You got to do this. You got to do this. And I wanted, I always wanted it on steam. And now that it's there, I feel like it's brought a fresh piece of life to the uh, game. And the biggest thing, and this is a quality of life thing. They're bringing um, auto updating mm -hmm. to steam. So mm. you can log into Steam, walk away, and your game will automatically update SOTOR. So when you when nice. it comes time to log in, you don't have to do the patching through their launcher. So essentially, you know, Steam is gonna on the back door make sure that it works and it's gonna work better, you know. That is way cool. And yeah, that so is really cool. Yeah, so I I would say the Steam stuff has been really cool. And you know, you play games, and I'm not an achievement hunter, but seeing all those achievements pop in when you first log into Steam, and, you know, out of 190 
achievements. I got 107, let's say. I forget what it was, and it was just going on for like 10 minutes. <laughs> and it's like, okay, now, now there's some recognition. You know what I mean? Because in the game, it shows you got the achievement, but it's not really anywhere easy to, in my opinion, to find. Where right. in Steam, it's right there as soon as you get into the window of your game. It shows all your most recent achievements. And um, I, I, I'm really looking forward to those two, those two parts. Um, but what do you guys think about the login rewards? Yeah, that one is interesting. So there's going to be essentially three different monthly windows. They're 28 days long, and the one of the nice the things I appreciate about it is that it is you do proceed along it at your own pace. So yes, you can do it in 28 days, but if you happen to be a player who only logs on a couple times a week, say, you'll get to it eventually. You're not going to be punished. Like there are there are ways of doing login methods, login bonus methods where you essentially get punished for not logging in every day. You know, like streak, you know, penalties and stuff like that or, or streak bonuses, but they end up being penalties if you don't get them all the time. Uh, so this one, at least you get to, I like the fact that you, you can do it at your own pace. I, I appreciate that. Even though I'm basically an everydayer, you know, it won't feel like a, a chore that I have to do. So I'm, I like that. Um, the, there's three different kinds. There's sort of a PV, a PVP, and sort of a, uh, I'm not sure what the other, I can't remember what the other third one is sort of called, but uh, it's, it's in the notes here somewhere. And but it sounds like the the differences are not very great until you get to that end bonus. So they're they're kind of like I don't know. Uh, I think it'll be fine. There's gonna, probably going to be some bonuses that I'm actually going to enjoy and and really use. A lot of them are just going to be pretty pretty basic. I mean, you know, a few thousand credits here and there doesn't mean too much to me at this point. I've been I've been staying ahead of the credit game, for instance. You know, and a, a few bits of Java junk or whatever, fine, but whatever. You know, so yeah. they're not they're not huge rewards for me, but I think it'll be it'll be nice. It, it's going to be good, and if it you know if it helps people, especially if you're like newer to the game, and you know, twenty ten twenty thousand credits actually does go a long way towards you know repairing or whatever, or maybe buying a little thing off the GTN that you wouldn't have been able to afford otherwise. Great, you know, I'm happy about that. How about you? Kitty? Um, I just kind of think I'm mad about it, but I'm still going to go in there and get them just in case. <laughs> right. You know, the, uh, putting them all together gets you something cool. I don't know. I uh, So far, I'm not very impressed. But, you know, better than nothing, I guess. It just, I thought that they were going to have like really cool stuff, but it seems to be stuff that I would normally just kind of sell. I wouldn't even, I don't think I'd use it all. What about you, Marcus? I am absolutely pumped for it. Here's why. So if you're a new player to the game and you're logging in and you're getting an XP boost, even if it's a minor XP boost, mm -hmm. that's going to help you. If you get a stim or a crafting mat that can sell for 20,000 credits, you go on the GTN and that item sells for 20,000 credits as a new player, you just got 20,000 credits. So right. for me, I like it because it's, it's something to help the new players. All of us who are yeah. seasoned veterans, you know, we're looking at it as what's the 28 day reward. Like, are we getting cartel yeah. coins? Are we getting exactly a, a, a real, uh, you know, the legendary ember that's worth something? I look at it as let's get the the new people hyped up for this game because, you know, for me, I want to see them. I want to see them stick around, and then I can teach them how to do operations, and then they can run <laughs> operations with me, and right. then they can then they can complain about the login rewards not being good enough for them, but then they can remember <laughs> that the new the login items are good for the old, the new players. You know what I mean? Right, right, exactly. And yeah, I'm I'm excited because I've I've tried ESO. I, I wasn't a big fan, but they do the login rewards, and their login rewards were really good for a new player. I don't. I can't tell you what they need on Endgame because I didn't play it for that long. But every time you logged in, you got something 
and I would see what the value was and it would give me money because I would just sell it. I didn't need it, but I would sell it in the same thing for the new players. So I'm, I say login rewards are great because it's another um, hook to right. get, you know, set the hook and catch those fish, which are the new players. Nice. Excellent. Very well said. <laughs> yeah. Right. I remember playing uh, an- another star Wars game, SWG, and they had login rewards, but they were monthly and they had one for every month. And the longer you were in the game paying your sub, the more gifts you would get. Hmm. And I thought that was a really great idea because they were some really, really cool stuff like instant travel things, stuff like that. And I, I would like to see them in uh, SWOTOR incorporate something like that. I think that'd be pretty cool. Yeah, for sure. All right. So the spirit of vengeance is probably what I'm looking most forward to. Um, I really do want to see the flashpoint. I'm, I actually avoided the, the test servers simply because I do want it to see it fresh. <laughs> Uh, and from the beginning, there are there's going to be solo story, story veteran, and master modes. So they're really trying to make this one sort of available to everyone, cool. you know, de- regardless of how difficult uh, you need it or like it to be, which is great. The the pictures, you know, the, that they threw up of the various interiors of the Spirit of Vengeance looked really cool. Um, there's also the Echoes of Oblivion. Uh, it's also going to be sto- very story oriented. So we know that, you know, there's some sort, you know, this is, this is where we've, we've heard the story about how, you know, Kira and Scourge and, and how they were knocked unconscious and then they got help, but now Satil Shan's messed up and anyway, and now they're trying to find find out where this is and they're hoping, you know, they're, they're thinking that it's possible that the, that the Emperor's either going to have one last, you know, vengeance from beyond the grave or possibly even uh, a way for him to return. They don't think that's possible, but it could be. And um, yeah, and and we saw in the in the dev stream that, you know, we're going to see the return of Darren DePaul as Val- Valkorian, at least uh, within this particular uh, storyline, which is kind of cool. Uh, we also there's also a bit of of some other you know people I won't get too spoilery but there was a you know other people returning as well, so that's that's also very that's all very exciting for me. That's what I'm really looking forward to. How uh, awesome is Darren DePaul? Yeah, his, his I love that guy. His interview right? is so so fun, and he's always fun. Yeah, like when you meet him, he's just full of enthusiasm about about Star Wars, about the game, about voice acting, about life. <laughs> He's just a really, awesome. really great guy. Um, yeah, so that was that was totally cool. There was also another pre-recorded interview, uh, Nosher Dalal, and he plays uh, one of the Mandalorians that, we, that we're going to see in 6.2, which is very cool. And he had a lot of interesting things when he did his interview, um, because he's done martial arts and stuff like that, about physicality of acting even when you're doing voice acting and uh motion capture and stuff like that so there was a lot of really cool stuff in fact he did uh the motion capture for valkorian which is really cool so he's he's like it's kind of like how um uh let's see like dave prouse rest in peace he just died you know he did he did from within the Vader armor, but then James Earl Jones was the voice. Well, we sort of have, you know, we have Darren DePaul doing the voice, but, you know, as as close as you're going to get, he, you know, uh, he did the, the motion capture. I'm sure Delal did the motion capture, which was really That's cool. That's so cool. Uh, it is so cool. <laughs> it's like, wow. And they, he said that to prep, he basically just had to hear Darren DePaul's lines because that you know his his uh, acting and his voice is so strong that it, he knew exactly what he wanted to do with the motion capture once he heard that so that was very cool so yeah i, I really there was a lot of fun um the return of life day is going to be you know <laughs> it looks like there's going to be a snowball <laughs> snowball headed baby wampa <laughs> which is <kind> of <laughs> hilarious a little picture of a baby wampa with a snowball stuck on its head which is really funny there's going to be the anniversary vendor around the same time. And uh, yeah, if you want to hear uh, the voice actor interviews, they made those available online. You can also go back to the Twitch channel for SWOTOR and that the whole dev stream will be there as well. But you can, like I said, you can also go 
to their uh, YouTube page and the actual voice actor interviews are there, which is great. Uh, ten, ten, ten year anniversary news will be coming next year, so they, they haven't said anything about that yet. That's too early for that. There's a bit of a Kira and Scourge tease at the end, which was awesome. And uh, yeah, Falcorian sort of faces them. You know, they're anyway. I don't want. I don't want to give, give too much away for for people who want to really avoid spoilers. But yeah, the, one of the interesting things I thought also when with that uh, Valkorian thing is you hear Valkorian's voice. You also hear the original Emperor's voice, which was uh, interesting oh, too. Right, right, right. Which was very Tenebrae. very cool. Tenebrae, the Tenebrae voice, uh-huh. right? But, uh, so I, I I don't know I don't know what that portends either, but that was really cool. Uh, they also put out a, an article about the making of gear inspired by the Mandalorian. So I would suggest going going ahead and reading it. It's just uh, it's a very nice uh, Mandalorian set that they have. You have it now, right, uh, Kitty? Oh yeah, yeah. And it's really nice, uh, really nice armor. And then they talk about like how you know how they uh, looked at the Mandalorian and sort of turned it into. Swotor uh, armor. They always have to. They always have to Swotor it up because, it, it, like they, they, they're always cognizant of the fact that they are set multiple thousands of years, you know, before the events that take place around the Battle of Yavin and shortly thereafter. And so they have to, you know, make it um, sort of ancient in a in a weird way and they you know, appropriate. It. They do. They do. They antique it up. <laughs> And yeah, so that was that was really nice to see uh, another article about that. Um, and let's see, but I think there's not too much else to it. Just go ahead and if you're interested, it's always it's always fun to see sort of behind the scenes stuff. But uh, we don't need to necessarily go into every detail that they talk about there. Yeah, I think it's really interesting that since um, EA has stepped up their game on star wars games in the last two years Mm -hmm. it's been um it's been really refreshing to hear and see that sotor is being included yeah and i think it's i think it's a really good sign for our future and um i'll talk about that more later yeah i would say so Uh, there are new category-wide sales on the cartel market and so it started a few days ago, and it's going to go uh, to December fourth, so a few few more days. And this is going to be the weapon tunings, color crystals, and then collection unlocks. So we talked a little bit about this in our week. I've been doing, I've been spending a lot of cartel coins on collection unlocks, even though you know I hadn't, I hadn't had to. I, you know, I've. Gosh, I mean, we've had these sales before and I have unlocked a lot of things in the past, but a few things have come up and it's like, okay, I want to have these unlocked for future characters. Um, I'm, I haven't really looked at the weapon tuning ones, but I re- probably should. I think I feel like I have another enough color crystals personally. Uh, I have, you know, most of the main colors and a lot of the variations. And then you also have to worry about whether it's eviscerating or Hawkeye or whatever. Uh, but the weapon tunings, I think I would like to unlock some more of those if possible. I'll, I'll see like how much they are with the sale and then uh, unlock those puppies. So, uh, yeah. And I know, Kitty, you unlocked a ton of stuff. Marcus, did you have you unlocked a lot of stuff this time around? I'm the worst guy when it comes to the sales. <laughs> I say to myself, <laughs> I, I, I'll log in and then I'll get sucked into a raid or I'll be playing right. a smuggler flirting with everything that walks and I'll, I'll keep saying to myself oh when i'm in the game tomorrow i'll do the i'll do the the duty and you know <laughs> unlock the things i want or i'll buy that mount i want but what ends up happening is i'll be doing something and i'm like oh yeah i want to unlock my revan sta- my hollow revan and then i go to do it and i'm like this doesn't seem like it's on sale. So I'll message the discord and they're like, no, you banana head. The sale ended three days ago. And I'm like, no. Oops. Um, yeah. I've done that so many times with mounts or outfits that I just, you know, I just forget and I get sidetracked and I miss the sales. Um, but 
I am also the other guy that has all the um all of the uh like uh when you buy the cartel packs, all of the stuff is just sitting in the pack, never opened, and it's like pages and pages <laughs> and pages of stuff that I've right. never used. I just do it to open up the box to see what I get. And people are like, You have millions and millions of credits sitting in your stash the board. item stash and i'm just yeah. like uh, yeah, i'll get to it tomorrow <laughs> yeah, i'll get to it tomorrow that's I'm exactly the same right. way procrastination <laughs> yeah it's good stuff. we get there when yeah, we get good. there <laughs> exactly i don't procrastinate at work but i procrastinate in sotor that sounds a lot of, that sounds pretty healthy then <laughs> yeah <laughs> which is nice all right there's a few other little details to go over they they did put out like a whole thing on exactly what happens when in the in the dev stream, so that's going to be in the show notes. If you so if you if you're like looking to figure out exactly when the talk about you know uh, Spirit of Vengeance is or whatever, you know you can you can find that out. There is a few bugs that were I thought were interesting. Uh, Legacy ignore not ignoring is happening for some people, so that they've their team is working on that one. No no time. Uh, don't time frame given. The uh, there's also on the GTN hitting the enter key is sometimes resetting the research in the GTN window when you're using it in the chat. Even though if you, even though you're using the enter in the chat window, so that is a uh, that is something that's apparently happening as well. I hadn't noticed it myself, but it's certainly possible that it's happening uh, regularly, or maybe it's just one of those occasional things. And then um, yeah. Uh, they didn't announce it was 6, 6 8 p.m. Uh, on the 30th. I think this was their time, though, so this is a couple hours ago. Just brought down the PTS for 6.2. No longer be able to access it. Thank you for taking the time uh, to test and share your feedback on the new Spirit of Vengeance Flashpoint, the login reward system, and the new emote window. You'll be able to check those new additions in our next 6.2 game update, Echoes of Vengeance. So again, no specific time given yet, but we do know it's going to be in December from what they've said before. So it's coming soon. Uh, last thing is uh, The Mandalorian. There's been two episodes. Uh, we'll try to be not too spoilery uh, here, but if you need to avoid all spoilers, this would be a good time to jump ahead. <laughs> uh, we'll try not to be too spoilery. So s Season 2, Episode 4, Season 2, Episode 5. Uh, episode 4 was the one... Uh, with a lot tons of action <laughs> basically felt uh, you know they go in they have a bunch of bunch of stuff going on they have to do a bunch of stuff and then they have to escape and it's all happening with a bunch of blasters <laughs> very well said very non-spoilery yes <laughs> good um, i liked it fine as far as it went it wasn't my favorite episode but, you know it had a few interesting things in it uh, I, I, five was a lot more to me, a lot more interesting. I, and I think we can focus more on that one, unless you have something that you really want to say about episode four. Uh, episode five, you know, we we have uh, the well-known return of Ahsoka Tano, which was awesome. Um, I thought she oh was God, yes. really well done, yes. uh, really well done, both in look and as well as acting, and and the writing was also very good in the episode. Uh, Dave Filoni keeps knocking it out of the park, of course. Uh, <laughs> so we we have a name for the child. Uh, so you know now we have three different names that you can call it. <laughs> so you can, yeah. you can continue to call it Baby Yoda. I'm sure some people will do that. Uh, the child is probably going to fade now that there's an actual name for uh, the child, and that's Grogu. Very unusual name. I don't know uh, what they were going for with that name, but hey. It, that, that it is what it is, but uh, it also referenced uh, Thrawn. We we didn't get to see him or anything, but uh, Ahsoka is looking for him. Mm -hmm. And prop, most importantly, as far as Swotor goes, drum roll. Brrr, um, the Mandalorian and uh, Grogu, or the child, are being sent to Tython, which was amazing. So we are gonna presumably, I mean see Tython. I mean, it, there's no guarantees, uh, but it's certainly <laughs> the, the, certainly what they've been quested with, essentially, and they certainly looks like they're going to go to Tython. I can't wait to see how it looks. Do they take cues from SWOTOR? Which, is, as far as I know, is the only like extant version of Tython that 
you know, exists in sort of a physical form. As I mean, I, I think Tython has been referenced in books and so on, but it's in terms of like a visual uh, version of it, I don't know if if, it, if Tython exists anywhere outside of SWOTOR, as far as I know. But now it will. Um, I can't wait. Um, do you realize what? So friends of mine who aren't video game players. Or they are, but they don't play this game or games like this. Mm -hmm. I've gotten three calls today asking me, what in the hell is Tython? <laughs> right, and right. And what I'm saying is, so if if I look through a crystal ball, this has opened the door to Star Wars The Old Republic. Mm -hmm. People are going to want to know what Tython is. Right. And when you go to Google and type in Tython, SOTOR is going to come up. Oh, yeah. And they're going to realize that they can download this game for free and find out what that is. Yeah. It's going to help this game a lot. Right. Because, yeah, awesome. I think it's going to it's already sort of clear, even from episode five, that, you know, they're making it obvious that Tython has a lot of like Jedi and force history in it. And because of that. I, th I think when people sort of think, oh, does that mean it shows up elsewhere in Star Wars stories? I think they will uh, run across Wotor for sure. And I am, like I say, I'm really excited to see. I can't, you know, I mean, obviously they're going to do what they, whatever they want to do, but I would love it if there was at least some hint of like how, it, you know, some, some hints that they've taken Wotor into account uh, yeah. when they make the new version of Tython. I uh, I know it has nothing to do with what they're going to do with Tython, but I watch a lot of, you know, the breakdown videos for, for the Mandalorian and everybody's using SWOTOR as their visual reference hmm. to Tython. <laughs> right. They're, right, actually, they're right. actually using SWOTOR for that as well. So that's kind <laughs> that's of interesting. Cool. That's very cool. Okay. Can I, um, I want to, can I put on my tinfoil hat a little bit and tell you what I see coming? Go for it. All right. So ready? So I've been saying this for a while. If you think about what this game has done in the last year, there's been a ton of quality of life interface updates, mm -hmm. right? The, the interface has been being updated a lot across the board, right? Keith in the live stream, the last thing he said is 10 year we're going to talk about the rendering of the game. Those are his words. Right. Now, now add in that Tython was mentioned in a live action Star Wars game. And now we've been getting the BD one droid from force. Right. Uh, Fallen order. We mm -hmm. got the, the squadrons playing. Right. Now we're getting Mandalorian armor. I'm just waiting for Yoda baby to come into <laughs> the cartel market. And that'll be the most sold item. People will play this just to buy Yoda baby. They will. Or Grogu. Sorry. He has the name now. But what I'm saying is. <laughs> yeah. I. I think we, there's no. So there's been no mention of another online Star Wars game. Right at all yeah certainly and nothing here, like an mmo well or anything but MMO, anything yeah i agree I anything agree. so even if they decided to announce something today it's not going to be here for three years when did they announce sotar and when did it release right. how many years between those dates right here's yep. the tinfoil hat <laughs> they're they're revamping they're building a new game engine they're going to make this game look like ESO or um, a higher quality graphical Battlegr game. Like Battlegrounds or something. Yeah. And then cool. and they're going to release the game on consoles in 10 Whoa. years. Well, that would be amazing. That's very tinfoil hat, but how amazing would that be? It, uh, it, it, I'm it's just a, piecing together the pieces of yeah. the things that have been said and you don't do all of these quality of life stuff like the ui stuff if you're just keeping the game the way it is and then keith saying that the game is being going to be rendered differently that's that that's says engine change to me maybe i'm completely wrong but when i'm right i want everybody to at me on twitter and <laughs> tell me you were right <laughs> 
You heard it here first. Yeah, I would love that. I mean, it's it's it, it is true that like whenever like one of the questions like when someone who is clearly not knowledgeable about Swotor comes to my stream or I've noticed on uh, you know comes to Kitty stream. One of the one of the common questions is: Is this available on anything other than PC? That is a very common question. Uh, so I mean, there is definitely like a potential interest out there, and we have two new uh, systems that are out there that just came out. So you know, interest in in home game systems is you know re peaking because of that. So well, th there's a lot of stuff going on. The other two, not including World of Warcraft, because that is it stands on its own. But the two most popular MMOs out there right now are ESO and Final Fantasy XIV, and they're on console. Right. Oh, they are? Yeah. Interesting. Hmm. Yeah. That was completely tinfoil added, but I'm just trying to piece together all the stuff. <laughs> and it would and it would answer a lot of the reasons why all of we've been starving for content for so long. I hope Maybe. you're right. That would be awesome. Do, is there would that change? Like, if if it was available on a console that you played, Marcus, would you play it on console? Or would you st stick to PC? Oh, I would play it on my PC. But what I would be excited for is my friends, um, my friends who play on Xboxes and Playstations could play it with us. Yeah. And how cool would it be to be able to take your friends into a game that? they take their first step into a larger world. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? And imagine, imagine this is their launch and they're seeing it for the first time. They're doing the smuggler story and they're going to learn what an asshole Slavic is. <laughs> and you get to witness that, right? How cool would that be to be able to do that? <laughs> right. Uh, it would be, uh, it would be Arjar, awesome. Arjar just said STO is uh, PC and console too. Very cool. So it can be done. Hmm. Right. I mean, they've, they, yeah, exactly. I mean, maybe that's, maybe that is something they've been working on. We know that it would be a ton of work because they've always said, like, you know, changing the game away from the hero engine, it would just be, you know, massive, massive amounts of work. I mean, we've talked about it even recently on this, on this show. It's like, it's so much it work that it, that it almost feels like insurmountable. But maybe, maybe back, quietly in the background, that's something they've been going for. I would absolutely love that. I think the game already, it looks very pretty. You know, they do a good job of using a little bit of like artistic styling and so forth so that the game doesn't have to look exactly photorealistic to look amazing. And I think it is a beautiful game still, even though, you know, it's nine years old, roughly. And but yeah, it, it would be a really cool to see it in a truly modern uh, engine, you know. That like the one they like yeah. the ones they use for all their other games. So because the ge this game is bri um, what's the O planet? Um, Osis. Yes. Osis. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When you do those world bosses, the game. I don't care what computer you have. The, those world bosses demolish your PC. <laughs> yeah, they do. And you right. know they've always said that the engine is you know, borderline maxed out. That's why they can't do a lot of stuff. So why not? If, if EA is doubling down on this game, which it sure seems it because they just said Tython on a live action show and all the visual things they're using is from SOTOR. I mean, they're putting it in the forefront. Maybe this is their way of doubling down on this game. Maybe so. I would love that. So I would do. <laughs> it would be wonderful. Okay. I'm Although I don't think I can hat. ever, <laughs> ever play this game with a controller. Is that how they play it on with the consoles? Yeah. Wow. I mean, they'd have to, but yeah, they they must they must have ways to simplify you know the actions and so on. Well, yeah. So you'd have your buttons, and then like let's say your left trigger and left bumper to use one set of abilities. You'll just hold down that trigger, and then you'll have your four right. or six buttons and then you have to hold down another one but it's all about muscle memory you know i i learned how to play this entire game walking with a mouse i do not use wasd to walk mm -hmm. you know what wasd is on my keyboard my defensive cooldowns nice Interesting. yeah because i, have, because I it, use an astromo i i don't 
I don't WASD either. I I use my mouse completely. What's a, what's a Mastromo? Um, it's it's a it's hmm. It's a <laughs> it is a device. <laughs> uh, it's a little bit like a keyboard. It's a little bit like a mouse. It's a little bit like uh, several other like sort of devices, and it's just it's just a way of sort of taking taking a lot of like little things that you can do with mice and and other sort of controllers and putting it in one thing so it's sort of a, like a semi keyboard and i just love it i've used I it just for, posted forever the link in utini cast chat and twitter is that what you're talking about i've never seen one of these unless uh, if this is what let me see let me take a look is it a game yes. pad Yes, that is that's that is what it is. This is a slightly different one than the one I've got, but yes, this is a, same okay, idea. Okay. Wow, so you have a hand rest, cool. you have a bunch of keys over your under your fingers, but then you've got you've got a you've got a scroll wheel, you've got a thumb joystick, you've got there's that that thing under the joystick is another button actually, though there's a button ab- above the thumb joystick as well, and uh, yeah, and you can and it's all programmable. So what you do is you just make the Nostromo match whatever like set of key binds that you want to do inside of Sotor. So I, I can do control alt and shift with with three buttons and then everything else becomes either a regular button press or it can be a control button press or it can be a shift or it can even be a control shift. So yeah, it's really cool. Oh I'm actually looking at exactly what it is right now. Mm-hmm. It looks like the thing that Ripley had you know, when she got into the uh, load lifter. <laughs> That's right. It does look like that a little bit, doesn't it? A little hand hand device that they've got. Yeah, that's right. So How cool is that? Yeah, I've used it for forever. I, I even finally wore out one after like six or seven years worth of using it. And then I'm on my second one and I just love it. So, yeah. Con- controller talk. Yeah, <laughs> controller talk on the Utini cast. All right. Any, uh, let's see. Anything else that you want to say about The Mandalorian? Other than I'm loving it. <laughs> yeah, I'm loving it too. Yeah, three episodes left, so it's going to get crazy. Right. And I kind of hope that the one thing that they do, and I know it's predictable, is I hope the last episode is like his team that he met through this season all mm-hmm. comes to help him end the last episode. You know what I mean? I right. think that's going to happen. And um, I'm really eager. So there's, I'm really eager to see what happens because Ahsoka said she wouldn't train him. Right. Yeah. That's why they're going to Tython. And that's what I'm saying. I'm, so you, yeah. And uh, although they, it might get delayed, I, I tend to think that Tython is coming up probably as soon as the next episode. Uh, partly because we know that one of the things they're going to do is he's going to like, put them on a little thing it's going to like broadcast essentially the fact right. that there's a force sensitive user on tython which means that that has to happen before you know anything has happens as a result of that so i kind of tend to think that tython's coming very fast as soon as this week i would love I that so but we'll excited. see We'll see. And imagine if they're going up the stairs into the Jedi Council door and the door's blue and you can click on it. I'll lose it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. I think that's a show. If you'd like to play with us in the Utini Knights Guild on the Republic side of the Satil Shan server or in our Utini Rage. Guild on the Empire side, do a slash CG Utini to join the Utini channel. Then let us know you're a fan of the show. You can email questions and comments about the show to utinicast at gmail.com. Follow us on Twitter using at utinicast. You can find contact details for us on our website, utinicast.com, which includes how to subscribe using iTunes, Stitcher, and the rest. We record the show live bi-weekly, usually at Tuesdays, 4 p.m. Pacific. Go to utinicast.com slash live to find out how to join in. Our theme song is Doomsday by the immortal Jean-Paul Zogby. And thanks for coming come in marcus and how do how do they how do they meet you how do they listen to you um tuesday saturday sunday nights i stream at twitch.tv slash marcus b814 and uh you can listen to working class nerds at working class nerds.com or any of the podcast places you find it and if you're a european person thank you for listening to working class nerds <laughs> Awesome. awesome. In America, <laughs> step it up. <laughs> Excellent. All right. <laughs> thanks, Marcus. And thanks Thank for coming, you. everyone.
We'll see you next show. Toodles! <laughs> okay. Stopping the stream.